has been reignited once again after the killing of an endangered elephant in Botswana. Well, images of the hunters posing next to the dead animal, which they reportedly paid $50,000 to shoot, have caused outrage online. Well, we're joined now by Olivia Opry, and a trophy, uh, she's a trophy hunter, disagrees with the backlash, saying that trophy hunting helps to preserve conservation. And in the studio is Giles Clark, director of the Big Cat Sanctuary in Kent, who argues that trophy hunting is abhorrent. And welcome back to both of you. Actually, this is a conversation we've had before and one that we're going to keep having, I imagine. Um, uh, Olivia, I wanted to start with you, first of all, actually, because the... You know, this image that has appeared on social media that everybody has got incredibly upset. Uh, lots of people saying, should this have be allowed to happen? And a lot of people are saying, no, it shouldn't. But your take on this is that it's all about context. In which context is that OK? Well, when you consider that Africa is a massive continent and these photographic areas are not just all... Uh, all that there is, there is a massive amount of land that is uh, people are living on that, and you have to give them a reason to to want to live with these wild animals, which is where trophy hunting uh, plays a role. The money generated from that goes back into those communities and incentivizes them to want to coexist with these animals. So we kill the animals so that they can continue to, uh, so that the humans can continue to live there. Um, let's, um, let's just talk about this particular kill last month. This is Leon Kachelhofer, uh, 50,000 pounds, as we said, which is about 38,000 pounds to kill the biggest elephant professionally hunted since 1996, uh, known as a big tusker, a hundred pounder for its size, iconically huge tusks weighing a hundred pounds. The elephant was re reportedly in its fifties, past its breeding age and was killed with a single shot. Uh, a second elephant was also killed. Um, so as far as this animal, is concerned this m m and a, you know the sort of weighty ways that we describe these things but it is a magnificent beast there's no question um you you you've obviously we have to ask you and as holly has already done you know why it's okay to kill such a magnificent creature but also the really evocative thing is the fact that you stand by the side of it and have your picture taken with it how proud how powerful i am that i killed this animal Right. Taking fo photos of it and posting online you know, is, is definitely creating a, a firestorm. Uh, and there's ways to do it in a tasteful way if you're going to post online. But quite frankly, uh, I would have not uh, put that out there. The thing is, is this is a really old bull, well over age 50 and past his breeding years. He was on his own. He was not with a herd. And he had wounds sustained by other bulls from fighting uh, that wanted the right to breed. So he was on his own. He also had an AK-47 bullet in him from potential conflict with humans, uh, or maybe it was poachers. Maybe it's it was just a failed. Maybe it was a failed trophy hunter who didn't no, actually manage to kill to him the last time. An AK. No, it's illegal to hunt with an AK-47 in Botswana. Okay, well, Giles, let's bring you in here then, because she's saying, you know, this is an old bull. Fifty has no impact on the herd whatsoever. Is that true? It's completely uh, untrue to, to say that an old bull is, is not having um, an impact on the rest of the elephant society. The, you know, elephants are sentient beings. We know they're incredibly intelligent. We know they're very uh, emotionally intelligent animals, but they have very complex societies. Now, there are numerous papers to suggest that older bulls are uh, actually, as they get older, are more sexually active but also just his sheer presence has an impact on all of the other elephants, other bulls and elephant herds um, in, in that area. And by removing him, we could actually be causing some of the things that Olivia is um, suggesting that we're helping solve by trophy hunting, i.e. if you remove a very mature, a very experienced individual male, there's no older male to control the younger bulls that then will go on to cause things like human elephant conflict and what I'd be really interested in is to ask Olivia we call this uh, a giant tusker he's a, he's a big tusker his tusks are over 100 pounds a tusk does Olivia know how many giant tuskers are left in Africa well they, uh, there's assumptions that there's a, anywhere from 24 to 48 but the thing is okay, this so particular so 20, bull so 20, has never 24. been spotted before so, so sorry, so 24 to 48 and two were killed last 
month alone in Botswana by trophy hunters. Did you uh, say, is that 24 to 48 in the whole of Africa? In the whole of Africa. That's all we have left of these giant tuskers. Oh and God. so by trophy hunters, artificially selecting which individuals they want, not based on doing a service to the environment or ecologically or the community, they're selecting individuals based on desirable trophies, i.e., in elephant's case, big tusks. If we eliminate those remaining 24 big tuskers, that, that genetic, that is it, those individuals are removed from the gene pool forever. You know, we could be the very last generation. But don't that... other bulls grow up to be big tuskers? Well, actually, because we are artificially um, selecting at an artificial rate, so at a much, much faster uh, rate of changing the way in which nature would do itself, no, we are seeing, in fact, some areas, and, and this is aside to trophy hunting, but we're seeing in some areas in Africa that historically, a decade ago, had so much poaching that elephants are now adapting to not have tusks at all. Mm. And, that, and, that, and that's, you know, it's a reflection on how quickly, you know, the impacts are felt throughout a, a population. Quite yeah. a few points made there, Olivia. Would you like to answer? So uh, breeding age is anywhere from 28 to mid 40s, and they're putting this bull in his early 50s. And would this even be a conversation if he had broken his tusks? Because quite honestly, uh, more than 60% of the trophies taken in Botswana have broken tusks. So could they have been 100 pounders? The thing is, is we, we can't just look at the animal, but we have to look at the shepherds of wildlife, those people who live with them, and giving an intrinsic value on a land that's not sustainable for photographic side of things. I, um, go on. I was going to say, well, again, that, you know, this is often the argument that we hear is that by trophy hunting, we're supporting local communities. Now, there's, a, there's an institute called the International Council for Game and Wildlife Conservation. And by wildlife conservation, you would assume that it's actually for animals, but it's very, very pro-hunting. By their own admission, that only 3% of hunting fees that are paid ever make it down to the local community level. That's if we're being generous. It's a so tiny, three, tiny... It's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Now, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, um, just a few years ago, looked at the value of elephants in Central Africa in response to the demands for potentially trophy hunting. So once you kill an elephant, whether you paid $50,000 for it or $100,000 for it, it's gone. That individual is gone forever. So it's only worth that single amount. Over the course of its lifetime, an elephant potentially could be worth millions of dollars to the local community and the national and obviously the global community in terms of not only when we talk about things like tourism, um, but also the, the services it provides to the ecosystem. Mm. They are mm. such an integral part can of I the just ecosystem. Ask, Olivia, can I just ask, because when I look at that picture, and I, I'm so disconnected, all it, I look at it and I just feel complete and utter sadness. What do you get out of it? I mean, I know that we are poles apart on this, but what joy does it bring you, killing an animal like that? Well... It's, it's not that you have to like the guy that's actually doing the hunt, but you have to be grateful that he's spending the money to do so because of millions of dollars that are generated. But you have to also look at Botswana. They have an approximate population of 135,000 elephants. Some say a lot more, but their carrying capacity, which, is, which means what they can actually handle on the land, is closer to 50,000. And that puts a huge pressure on all the other species that in some cases are going endangered or extinct because they are incredibly destructive. And so President Masisi in all of his wisdom recognized that trophy hunting will play a role in ultimately conserving them because of the money generated. No, but we just, have to I've seek got, solutions got, we, together. We, we, yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, I mean, bearing in mind that most people would say it was the animals that should be there and the people shouldn't, you know, or, or should live together and find a way to live together to sustain the planet. However, that's a utopian thought. Um, let me just pick, pick up on the, that you've used this a number of times here here, uh, and that is the money generated for local communities. Now, Giles, I think your figure was 3%. That's 3% going to those local communities. Your argument holds no weight whatsoever because the money doesn't go back to the local communities. Well, that's hyperbole, but in Botswana, this was $50,000 that actually did go into the community, you not to mention 5,500... You saw, you saw where that went? You have the tracking for that money? 
We can provide that, yes, absolutely we can. This is a tag that is purchased by, from the communities that live with them. It's on the edge of NG13 are three different villages, of which uh, they had an elephant conflict and a man killed on March 10th. Uh, he was just trying to protect his crops. But as a result of this particular elephant, those communities received $50,000 out of this hunt of which can be proven. And there are many cases in other countries where there can be corruption, that's absolutely true. But in the case of Botswana, with a responsible management plan that President Masisi put in place, he wanted to incentivize the people to want to live with these animals. Because if there isn't a value on them, they're going to poach them. They can't live like that. It's death for them. You know, they're, they're just trying to make a living. It's like you waking up one morning and, and all of a sudden your bank accounts are emptied. Their elephant comes in, destroys their crop, and they have nothing left. It's breaking up family communities because husbands are having to leave to go make a living somewhere else because they're starving. So then he goes off to, to mound and gets a job there, creates a family there, and his family in these areas are struggling to survive. And we, we ha can't have this neocolonial tendency of trying to dictate how people must live in a place where we don't have to live. We f get frustrated with deer in our yard eating our our flowers. But they're, not, they're not the locals six... dealing with the animals on their property or in their land, destroying their crops. This is, you know, this is rich people going from across the world and and and, and shooting the animals. Um, so that's a very different argument. It, it, it's the, the, it, there is also an argument that says that it leads to unnecessary suffering. Um, so you have Cecil the lion, that 12-year-old lion, we all saw those pictures in 2015, shot with a crossbow, left to suffer apparently for 14 hours before the hunter went back to kill him. So that's not OK, is it? Hunters take great pride in, in making sure that the weapon that they've chosen, the bullet that they've selected, is going to have the quickest that one. Uh, death to their life. But you also have to look at nature. What does nature's death look like? He's either going to get stabbed by another bull, he may be poached, or he may starve. It's a bit more of a fair, the other fair problem playing field, field in nature, though, isn't it? <sighs> I think. I, Sorry? Just... I said it's a more fair playing field in nature, isn't it? <laughs> it, well, when, yeah, nature is going to put disease forth and you're going to have hundreds of elephants that were just killed this year because of a disease, because of overpopulation. But, but, but so where, nature... Where do, you, where, do you where do you stop then? If you're saying, right, OK, well, nature now has no place in, uh, in the animal kingdom. Uh, so, you know, all of these animals are going to die anyway, so we may, we may as well just kill them. Um, let's... Uh, final word, Giles. Well, it's... It, I, it, there's no comparison. We cannot compare what we are doing to humans, um, to wildlife, the biodiversity crisis and the environmental crisis, to say that, oh, well, they were going to die anyway because that's natural, so we're just, we're just helping them, what, do it quicker? And, and, I, and the other argument that you often hear from the trophy hunting industry is that we base what we do on scientific vigour. So it's, it's vigorously tested and we're doing it in a sustainable way. And this is one of the examples where I would say that the word sustainable is being uh, used as greenwashing and, and window dressing. Because you only have to look at what just recently happened in um, South Africa. So last month, or sorry, the month before, they issued their um, licenses and permits to shoot a whole range of endangered animals. Now, the fact that we classify them endangered means that they're very vulnerable to extinction in the first place. So we should argue that, you know, it's a, it's a moral contradiction to think that we can kill something to conserve it. But beyond that, they issued permits for 10 um, African leopards to be killed within this season. Now, that same department, the Department of Fisheries, uh, of, uh, of Forestry and Environment, had just three weeks prior released a report, a report saying, we don't know how many leopards there are in South Africa, but what we do know is that they are rapidly declining because of these reasons. And then that same department then issues permits for 10 of them it's to be killed. It, it doesn't make sense. It's a complete contradiction. And all I would say, as my final word, is that in today's society, humanity has a better way mm. than killing. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you both. Uh, no, we've, we've had this uh, conversation before. Both of you have, uh, have, have discussed it on the, on the sofa. I'm sure we'll discuss it again. But we do appreciate um, you, uh, you taking your time to talk yeah. to us. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you.